Hello and welcome. Today I'm unboxing the Cherry KC 4000. This is an ultra slim keyboard for when you don't have enough space on your desk. For example, when there's a huge tablet right next to it. There's also a 4020 edition with backlight, which was a little too expensive for having just for sometimes around. So here it is in this minimal packaging made in China, designed in Germany. And that's what is inside. Plastic on keyboard and a cable. This is the German version. I do prefer US American, but I don't need to look at the keyboard. And again, for this one, I just wanted the cheapest edition. Here's the manual. On three pages, we get congratulated, some tips, you know, basic stuff. Troubleshooting. The only troubleshooting is disconnecting it and using a different USB port. That's that's kind of cool. And warranty information. And that would be it. That's it for packaging and manual. And we can unfold this even more, but there's nothing else. Nothing to be found. I do like this super slim packaging, though. Okay, time to take the packaging off. We're gonna connect it to a computer, test it, we're gonna compare the size to a different Cherry keyboard, a full-size one. And this one feels very nice, it has um, some kind of texture to it, and isn't completely glossy, that is nice. And yeah, just super compact, that's really cool. Down here we even have these props or flips for making the keyboard be tilted, if that's what you like. You have these uh, nice pathways for the cable. When you have a static position where the keyboard always is, you can direct the cables to wherever is more, most comfortable. That is really nice. And here we have some basic information and some standard stuff. So I noticed on the side there is this kind of gap. I'm trying to lighten it with my phone here. Basically, you can reach inside a little. And uh, I don't know why. It seems like if you had removed it, you could have one half inch less of width, perhaps. Maybe one third of inch. But I'm guessing for stability purposes, or maybe actually just for aesthetics, they decided to not have it like that. We're gonna do a little sound check. Just gonna record the sound of a typing. Well, nothing out of the ordinary, I would say. The cable is quite long and it feels so uh, so weirdly rubbery. It does feel a bit different from most cables, uh, USB cables or keyboard cables I've touched so far. But it is kind of nice. Alright, so I have an overlay by, from an app that r is really nice for displaying what keys are pressed. This is caps lock, it changes the light. And I'm just gonna type some, press some buttons. Again, this is a German version, but the layout is the same, just the print is different, depending on which version you're using, so don't freak out. Sorry, sorry I didn't get the US American one for a more standardized unboxing. I mean, check out the FN key at the bottom left. This is something to get used to if you are not using laptop keyboards all the time. But the combination of the FN key and any key that has something blue will make the blue thing uh, be pressed. Okay, the Windows key brings up the menu, and I didn't have that well placed, that uh, window. So this is one difference. This key is actually down here by the spacebar, rather than on the left side of the Z key, or on German keyboard, Y key. Also different, these two keys. One of them removes the upper part of the Enter key, but other than that, everything seems to be normal. But other than that, everything seems to be quite normal. So now we're going to test the FN key some more. The Enter key is Enter, but if you press the FN key, then you have NumPad Enter. And uh, there are NumPad numbers all over the place. So you get uh, NumPad minus, NumPad plus, uh, NumPad numbers, all that kind of stuff. Right? So you just press these buttons while FN is pressed and it'll work. Now there's this one key, num lock, and it doesn't exactly do what you expect. It actually does what you expect on a normal keyboard. That means if you enable it, you still have to press the FN key 
to use the keys on the numpad, the number keys, but they will not show up as the numbers anymore. So I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be. I mean, shouldn't they actually be the arrow keys? I thought that's what they're supposed to do when not when numlock is not enabled. So I forgot to record this, but I did test the numpad keys again, and when numpad is disabled and I hold down Fn and press the, the numpad numbers, then nothing comes through. No arrow key movement, no numbers. So this might be a bug of this keyboard. Everything else works fine though. Of course keys will block each other, but that's to be expected. So I got a G230 also by Cherry to compare the size. Here it is, it's a full-size keyboard, also very flat, also quite black, uh, more glossy though. And here we have the super slim one. Ah, beautiful. Let me just get a ruler. So the full-size keyboard has a width of 46 centimeters or 16 inches. And the KC4000 is 30.5 centimeters or 12 inches wide. The big one is 17 centimeters or 6.7 inches high and the small one is 40.5 or 5.7 inches high. So if you have a full-size keyboard on your desk right now you can go up to the left arrow key and imagine cutting off the right hand side of that part of the keyboard and now think do you want this? I think this is pretty good. So I got two more keyboards I used to use that are both broken unfortunately to compare the size and uh, let's take a look at this. This one is really uncommon in design but I think it's quite perfect especially the FN key being on the right hand side of a control key. I loved it unfortunately it doesn't work anymore. There is no replacement to be found anywhere. Sad story but the cherry seems like a good replacement actually. Now the next one was more of a mistake uh, this is an ultra slim super cheap keyboard with horrible feel. This one failed after less than a week of use. I think it was the wiring of a cable, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, thankfully I got it refunded. Um, it's just not good. This one is called MS Mini 1. I think many different companies label it differently. But you can pretty much tell by the design. I don't know if I got very unlucky with this one version. But I think alone the horrible feel of the keys is reason enough to not even want a working version of this. That was it for a Cherry KC4000. There are cheaper alternatives, but I expect it to perform well and last long. I hope this video was useful. Please subscribe to support this channel and I will see you next time. Ciao!